if you think about it, the best people to learn business from or to gain knowledge about business from are those who have been in the game the longest and have achieved a lot of success. I mean, anybody can spit out business advice, but what have they done and how long have they been in business? These are questions that you should ask. Well, one of the guys that has been in this game for a long time and achieved a lot of success in a real healthy way is Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey is probably best known as America's most popular personal finance coach or personal finance guru. The guy has multiple best-selling books. He has over 12 million listeners on his daily radio show. And along the way, he has built an incredibly successful business, all centered around giving his content away for free. What a concept. Now, I'll admit I'm a huge Dave Ramsey fan on the personal finance side of things. His book, The Total Money Makeover, was the book that changed the course of my financial life over 13 years ago. And because of his teachings and his relentless commitment to the same message for decades, my wife and I have money in the bank, a financial future, and we just paid off our house. So thank you, Dave, if you're watching this. But Dave also has a very powerful book on business called Entree Leadership. It's a word he coined to describe the entrepreneur and the business leader, a small business leader, and how those two things fit together. And while some of the book might not be relevant to solopreneurs like you and me, whether it's about hiring, firing, or compensation packages, that doesn't take away from his collective playbook of knowledge and experience and wisdom that he's gathered over two decades of being in the trenches, as he says, and running his business. And what I'd like to do in today's video is break down the three big golden nuggets of his book, Entree Leadership, and apply them to you and your business. Nugget number one, if you can focus, you can win. Now this is relevant to a video I did earlier about the magic of consistency, routine, and just showing up. There is something powerful about just being in the game long enough and being consistent and not losing sight of what you're trying to do. And I think Dave has an amazing observation that's kind of a light bulb moment if you think about it. In the book, he says, the whole culture has become afflicted with ADD or attention deficit disorder. So much so that anyone or any business that can maintain its focus has an almost unfair advantage in the marketplace. Think about what he's saying. Anyone can come up with a business idea. Anyone could put a video on YouTube like me. Anyone can start a website or start a business. It costs less than $50 to get up and running. But there's two big variables here that we don't know about those people. Is what they're offering valuable? I talk about that a lot because if it's not valuable, guess what, no one's gonna buy it. But two, even if it's valuable, can those businesses focus on the same message and deliver every single week, every single month, every single year for decades? The answer to that question is no. Most people can't, and there's a lot of reasons why. One, we just have a hard time focusing, like he's saying. We're a culture that has got so many distractions. It is really rare to be able to focus, and then as an organization or a business, even if you're a solopreneur like me, to stay focused for any length of time. And since success rarely happens overnight, Dave talks about in his book, I've shared that here before, it takes time to actually achieve any level of success that is satisfying which means most people aren't gonna wait. They're not gonna put up with the time it takes to build an audience, the time it takes to develop your product line, the time it takes to understand and master marketing and copywriting and sales and email marketing and email funnels. All of these things take time to learn, to develop, and to do well, and things eventually snowball, but they don't happen quickly. And if you go a year or two and you're not seeing the results you want, most people will quit and then they will have to start all over again and never be able to see success. So this is so simple, but don't dismiss it because of simplicity. I'm a living, breathing example of this. I started a YouTube channel in 2010. I started blogging in 2009. Nobody cared. Nobody knew who I was. My brother watched my videos and my mom watched my videos. But guess what? I put out content every single week and have been for a decade. And I built product after product after product. And I tried my hand at marketing and sales copy and email. And I made mistakes and it was ugly in the beginning, but I got better and better 
and more people heard about me and more people heard about me and eventually the machine was able to pay my bills. And then after paying my bills, it was able to give me more money than I ever dreamed I would have. And from there I could reinvest into the business and I could be more generous and a lot of things had changed because I haven't quit focusing. And I don't want you to quit focusing either. If you have a validated business idea, you've tested it in the marketplace, you've done the research like I tell you to do. And if you believe in it, don't quit even if it's slow going, even if you're doing this on the side, Dave's point is you gotta hang in there and focus. And if you can do that, you're gonna have a leg up on everybody else who's got an idea after idea after idea, and then they give up when they don't see any success. All right, nugget number two is to use the funnel approach to business. Now, I'm not just talking about email funnels, don't get hung up on that word, but what Dave means is an actual funnel where it's big at the top, narrow at the bottom. I'll let him explain. The funnel approach is simply having some inexpensive or free and quick ways to interact with your company. The quicker and cheaper the product or service, the more people you will draw. This can be as simple as having lots of quality content that the customer can get for free on your website. Then you develop a product that has a little more cost and might take more time. You should continue this down the funnel until you get to your most expensive and time intensive product. The more money and time you ask of your customers, the fewer will follow you down the funnel. But remember, the greater the number that enter at the top, the more will come out the bottom. If 10 people visit your website to read content for free and four end up buying a $59 product, and then one of them purchases a $3,500 product, you have accomplished your goal. Your next goal should be to have 100 people start at the top instead of just 10. So while millions of people may buy and read this book for less than $30, the number of people who will shell out $6,000 to go to a week-long class taught by me on leadership in a resort location is much smaller. Now, what Dave is explaining is a classic business model that works really well because it works the way people work and it works the way statistics unfold, right? Most people, the widest net of people, are not gonna spend any money with you. They're just going to take a look. In a real world brick and mortar store example, these are the window shoppers. They literally walk up to the, the store and they look inside the window and they're just looking. Maybe they come in the door and then they walk around the actual store and they pick up a pair of shoes on the shelf and then they put them back down. They're not gonna buy anything, they're just looking and that's the largest number of people. But then you've got people who might buy one thing with you. And that's a bigger number of people than that would buy a more expensive thing. And that number dwindles as the price increases of those premium products and as the commitment increases, like Dave was saying. So my business is built the exact same way. And this is what I've been trying to teach you for so long here on this channel is you start with not only cheap, but free. Dave mentioned that, free content. This is your commitment to reach the masses at least in your niche. Not everyone's gonna like your content, so you make it for your target audience, but you make it free so that it is accessible to all. And it has to be good free, okay? Dave Ramsey's business is built on a free radio show five days a week for three hours. He sits on his show and he answers calls for free three hours a day. You can call in and ask him any financial advice and he will give you his advice, the same advice he would give you in his book or his live events or his one-on-one -on -one coaching, but he gives it out for free. That's crazy, but you know why he's the biggest personal finance coach in America? It's because of this. He is focused, laser focused on delivering free content to as many people as possible. That costs money, production, time. He's not able to make money during those hours because he's working for free as it were, but he knows, just like I know, that the free content drives the business. From there, people, Realize he's got a $15 book or a $30 book you could buy. That's the next step up. It's a low cost, low investment, but now I'm committed to reading it, so that's a little bit longer than listening to a radio show, and then if I apply his knowledge, I'll get results in my finances, then I realize Dave is legit and this is really helpful. Maybe I'll take his class, Financial Peace University, a few hundred bucks. Maybe I'll go see him at a live event like the Smart Conference or his Entree Leadership Conference. Maybe I'll go to one of his in-person premium workshops where he's got a small group of business owners and you see how it builds. It all starts from the wide net at the top. So if you imagine a funnel, 
its mouth and its opening is widest at the top and its opening at the bottom is very small. So you wanna put as many people into that funnel as possible. So the funnel has to be wide, it can't be a cylinder and it can't be upside down, it has to be wide at the top, which is your free or low cost product. And then you wanna get as many people into that funnel because they will trickle off. But at the bottom, you're gonna have your premium products. As the price goes up, the number of people that are a fit for it goes down. But you get as many people in the top and they decide how deep to go in your funnel for their needs and their budget, but it's a very simple process and it helps you build out a product line and think through your whole business with a strategy. So try the funnel approach to your business. It works really, really well. And golden nugget number three from Dave Ramsey's Entree Leadership is that debt magnifies mistakes. Now we couldn't talk about Dave Ramsey without talking about debt. Not only does debt eat up your profit and make your business a little tighter in terms of what it needs to pump out to stay afloat. What Dave means is that it prohibits you from taking risks and trying new ideas. Listen to what he has to say about this. Since I don't know which one of my brilliant ideas is gonna be a mistake, it becomes a huge error to borrow into and increase the size of my mistake. We have made so many errors and miscalculations there aren't enough pages to recount them. I'm sure our gleaming mountain of success is actually a pile of garbage, a pile of mistakes and missteps, only we are standing on it rather than lying buried under it. If you are standing on mistakes, you are a success. However, if you have borrowed to increase the size of your mistakes, you will be out of business. Non-fatal failure is encouraged and it's how you learn to ride a bike. But when you borrow to implement your latest brilliant plan, you exponentially increase your chances of fatal failure. Now you may not be borrowing money for your business, or maybe that idea has never even crossed your mind because as I've told you here and as you're finding out, it's really affordable to start an online business. In fact, it can be started for less than $50. I've never once had to borrow money for my business and never intend to, but this is something to consider because a lot of businesses require more tools, products, retail space, all those kinds of things that can be expensive. And many people have told me, but I've got to borrow money for this. Or I have a great idea and I can only do it, but so far if I had a little bit of extra money, I could reach more people with this idea and I could sell more faster. Yes, you could, but you could also make a mistake and maybe it's not a product or service that people really want and you were wrong and then now you owe a lot of money and that mistake is more fatal than it would have been if it had just been a flop. Making a mistake and having a product that doesn't go anywhere, it sucks, I've done it, okay? But making a mistake and having a product that doesn't go anywhere but you borrowed money to get it out there, that's even worse, you don't want to be there. Now if you're the person that needs large purchases to run your business, then this might be helpful. Dave breaks down four principles that he and his business use to make those large purchases without any debt. Number one, they just pay cash. That's the most important rule. They don't borrow money for their purchases, they save up. So if they know they need a $10,000 piece of gear, they'll save $1,000 a month until they get there, or $500 a month until they get there, or $100 a month until they get there. It's like us in real life. If we wanna go buy something, we have to save up and pay for it. Otherwise, we're gonna borrow for it. If I wanna buy a car, I'm gonna save up my money and buy a car, which means it's gonna take me longer than the guy down the street who just borrows money to buy a car. He can have that car today, but now he owes the bank. I don't wanna do it that way. So it might take longer, but you save up, gradually and you pay cash. Number two, he says, rent until you can pay cash. So for example, in the recording world, there's all kinds of gear that you could borrow money for and have really nice microphones and really nice speakers you could put on your credit card. Or if you really needed that piece of gear and you can't afford it yet, you could actually rent it. There's plenty of places that will allow you to rent that equipment at a much lower cost and you just pay that small cost as you use it to make money in your business but you're not out the whole cost of it, you haven't borrowed money for it, and you can be saving until you can pay for your own version of it. Or maybe you don't actually need to own it, you just rent it when you need it. There's other ways to get what you need without borrowing money for it, and renting is one of those. Three, he says to outsource so you can avoid debt. Instead of spending a lot of money or borrowing a lot of money like a line of credit from the bank to be able to afford employees or to afford certain in-house services or something really specific, just outsource, freelance, there's people that can do just about everything you need on a job to job basis, on a gig basis. It's a much simpler, cleaner way to run your business. I have a few contractors that do work for me on the regular. They're not full-time employees. I don't have payroll. It's a much easier and cleaner way to work. And then number four, he says to buy used. There's no shame in having used equipment, having 
used furniture, whatever it is, you don't have to buy new. So if it's important enough to have and it's quality made, buy it used, you'll save a ton of money. So there you have it in true Dave Ramsey fashion, very simple advice, but you know what? Most people don't follow it. Most people don't stay focused. If they would, they would stand out in the marketplace and have an unfair advantage. The funnel approach to business makes so much sense, but people don't think that way. They wanna sell everything from the get-go, push their products from the get-go. They don't realize they need to give free value away first to get as many people in the funnel as possible. Then you can sell to your premium people down the road. And three, debt just magnifies your mistakes. You and I don't know what's gonna be the hit product or the hit service or the hit idea, so don't borrow money to try your ideas out. Do everything with cash, even if it means you have to grow your business slower, it's the wiser and safer way to go. And if you're thinking about starting or growing your business and you wanna do it on the cheap, or you think you have an idea, you're not sure if it really is gonna be profitable or not, I have a four-week plan for you. A four-week plan to go from no idea to actually putting money in your account. It's a great way to jumpstart your online business and test out your idea. It's called my 30-day no-hustle business plan. And it's an absolutely free PDF. I want you to be able to download as my gift to you. Read through it. I think you'll really get a kick out of it. But it gives you a step-by-step -step plan. If you have zero audience and you're testing out your idea in the marketplace to go from no audience to making money in 30 days, this becomes a framework that then you can build your true, complete, full-time online business off of. But you might as well start here. It is a no-hustle guide, meaning it is not about sacrificing everything at the altar of your business. I gotta do whatever it takes to make money. That's not how I live. That's not how I want you to live. I want you to fit this into your actual life. Just do the 20% of the things that really matter. Follow the plan, put it into practice, and go from nothing to money in as little as 30 days. It's a free guide. You can grab your copy. There's a link below here in the description box, or just go to grahamcochran.com slash 30 days. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to these videos, and I'll see you on another video real soon.